Welcome to Surprise Church. Thank you for joining us. Whether you're in Bismarck, Mandan, Minot, Dickinson, Williston, you can worship anywhere with us, anytime. Thank you so much. We want to thank Proximal 50 for allowing us to film here this Sunday morning. Right now, you can check in for charity at our Surprise Church Bismarck Facebook. Every check-in helps bring medical supplies for the COVID-19 relief. You can also text to get involved by following the prompts. You can get involved and stay involved. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come to worship together under uncertain times, Lord, bring us together and make us stronger, Father, and allow us to follow you and just give us all strength to keep going on no matter what the times may be, because you are a certain God and uncertain times. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Before I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. And oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. Oh, it chases me down.
God, when we are in you, you give us the strength and the power to do amazing things. God, I pray that we look to you today. I pray that we find your love, we find your grace in this moment right now. Thank you for all that you do for us, for surrounding us in your love, Jesus. We love you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey, welcome, everybody. We are so glad that you joined us once again for Worship Anywhere at Surprise. Whether you're watching from Minot, Williston, Bismarck, Dickinson, we're just glad you're here. Thank you for joining us as a, as a state, as a community in worship today. A uh, quick thing, if you have uh, access to uh, the internet uh, for wherever, from wherever you're watching, uh, go ahead and go to our Worship Anywhere webpage, and you can download our discussion guides. You can click the discussion guide and notes page banner. Um, we have a, a page where you can take notes, and you can even draw pictures uh, with your kids. They can draw a picture of what we're talking about today and answer, you know, kind of float along with the message. And then after your talk, uh, you know, it's a 30-minute service. Talk for 30 minutes with the people that you're watching with. Some of the questions that uh, help you dig a little bit deeper into the messages. Um, also, if you're interested in helping to sponsor these broadcasts, you can go ahead and email scott at surprisechurch.com. Let us know that you'd like to be a sponsor. Either you can sponsor in your own name, your business, or in honor of a loved one if you'd like to do that. So uh, you can certainly, and we'll mention our sponsors um, on Sundays on air. Um, today we're talking about life. As we've, we are continuing this COVID-19 crazy phase that none of us have ever seen before, um, it makes you think about some of the big questions of life. Um, but before I get into that, I want to do a quick apology for the tuft of hair incident last week. I came, um, I've never had hair this long, I usually do the crew cut, and I, when, I, when I saw the side angle, I had like a giant tuft of hair. We'll, we'll even put a picture just to show you how bad it was. I just want to apologize and say that the Surprise Church is not responsible for the hair incident last week. I'm sorry that it was a spiritual distraction, and I used my wife's hairspray today to make sure it wouldn't happen again. Wait a minute, she's watching. So, sorry, honey, I would never do that. I would never use your hairspray. Okay, I'm glad we got that cleared up. I want to show you something over here on the whiteboard. Uh, as far as we're thinking about life, sometimes we get stuck thinking about life in a very... I guess simplistic way where I think about I'm born and then I die and then you just live kind of with this stopwatch ticking down of well I guess I'm just going to live before I die and I think what that leads to is more of a, a follow your feelings mindset where what do I feel like doing before I die I want to accomplish my dreams. I want to be a dancer. I want to do this or that job. I want to make money. I want to travel. I want to experience life. But your life is confined to the purpose of what do I feel like doing before I die? Never mind that there's a gigantic timeline before and after that can actually give my life huge amounts of purpose. The passage of scripture we're going to be looking at today from Ephesians chapter 2, last week we were in Ephesians chapter 1 in our Time to Grow series, we're going to look at um, th this timeline that gives our timelines purpose, okay? And as we look at the idea that this passage raises up, is, is not that, you, that you're going to die, so do what you feel like before you die, it actually says you did die. That's what it says. It tells us that we actually died. And then, if that's true, it begs the question, who am I now? Who was I then? Who am I now? Those fundamental identity questions. And why did that happen? Who did it? Who, who raised me back up? So we're going to look at this. We're going to listen to Ephesians chapter 2, starting in verse 1, if you want to follow along with us. Um, as for you, you were dead. <laughs> you were dead in your transgressions in sin, and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, kind of a, a way of talking about evil realities that can have power over us, the spirit that is now at work in those who are currently disobedient. Now it levels a playing field. We're not talking about some jerks over here, or some bad apples over there. We're talking about you, we're talking about me that had this inborn spirit of rebellion against the God who made us. We all have it. Everyone has struggled with this. This is where we all start out. All of us also lived among them at one time. Now listen to how it describes what this lifestyle is like. Gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. So it's not talking about murder 
although it can lead to that. It's not talking about bank robbery, although it can lead to that. It's just talking about a way of life in which I just do what I feel like doing. It's just talking about a way of life where I just I follow my feelings. I take my dog for a walk every day, and I had an injury to my Achilles tendon this year, so I'm a little unstable, and I think he knows it. I think he takes advantage of it because he's a 75-pound bruiser. And when he sees a squirrel, when he sees another dog, especially a female dog, he gets excited, and he, he drags me, and it hurts. He follows whatever impulse comes into his tiny brain. And this passage says, yeah, sound familiar? Does it sound familiar? Because it should. You know, you, you were all among them, and many, many people still are where we just say, I'm going to die, I'm going to do what I feel like doing before I die, and that's my life, that's why I exist. This pastor says, no, 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 if you know Jesus, you have been lifted above an animal dog-like life to something greater, something richer, something much more full of purpose. All of us lived among them. Like the rest, it says, the end of verse 3, we were by nature deserving of wrath. As we live in a lifestyle that rebels against the God who made us, there's a judgment factor, there's a punishment factor, there's a reality of us being alienated from our our God, our creator. And then verse 4 comes, the big but of scripture. But God, because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you've been saved. So going back to my map here. God inserted Jesus Christ into this timeline. He created the world right here. Here's America. Here's South America. Here's Europe. And there's Africa. Okay, that's the world. He created the world here. And then the world fell. And there's a state of of death globally. Jesus then comes to bring new life to the world, to restore creation back to God. Then you and I were born, and we we were born in this state of, of death. And it says that we were following our cravings and living under the power of, of of a false identity. And then the cross came into our story. For those of us who have found the ability to trust Jesus, the cross has found its way into our story. And we changed from living for feelings to living a new identity, a new life. But God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. It's by grace you have been saved. Now, this isn't the end of the story, though, see? The new identity comes with a new lifestyle. If the old identity is doing whatever we feel like doing, like a dog does when it's on a run with an injured owner, (laughs) listen to our new identity. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that, this is This is crazy. This is crazy. Listen to this. In order that in the coming ages, he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed to us in his kindness in Jesus. Expressed in his kindness to us in Jesus. Here's, Here's the deal. God came and expressed kindness to the world in Jesus Christ when he could have expressed judgment and punishment. Then... That story of kindness came into our lives. And what this passage just said is that God has a seat planned for us. There's like if you go to a restaurant and you've been already seated before you get there, there is a seat in God's kingdom and God's family forever. It says this, you've already been seated. You're not there yet, but there's going to be a day where you have a chair that you see has been waiting for you in God's kingdom forever. And and this passage says that, that, that you've been seated with him in the heavenly realms for a reason. And here's the reason. So that in the coming ages, he might show the incomparable riches of his kindness The riches of his grace expressed to us in the kindness of Jesus Christ. That means the kindness that Jesus showed on the cross is not like a one-time thing where God says, look, I was nice to you, I forgave you, get your act together. This cross is an appetizer of the eternal relationship God wants to have with you and I. We have a kind 
God who wants to then put his kindness on display forever. And the, the, the way that that looks is how it looked in Christ where God says, I'm wiping away your brokenness, your sin, and I'm just going to express my lavish love and kindness to you forever. This afterlife that God dreams of where we're all going is one in which God expresses the same kindness that he showed us in Jesus to us forever. The cross is an appetizer an eternal appetizer of the relationship God wants to have with you every single day in which he forgives and loves and gives you second chance after second chance and then in which he brings you home forever to express his kindness and love forever. God isn't just like a last chance God. He's an everyday God. I love that timeline better because it adds a whole new layer of meaning and purpose to our lifeline. And now it says... A famous verse that many of us have heard of. For, for it is by grace you've been saved through faith. This is not from, from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by work so that no one can boast. Sometimes we think, look, I've been, I've been uh, doing a pretty good job in my life. And, I, and maybe I deserve what God has coming for me. This says, no, no one can boast. We are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Which God prepared in advance for us to do. So I'm going to close with this. Look at this. Back here before he created the world, God had a dream. And it was one in which he would express his kindness to us in Jesus forever. It's one in which he would have a love relationship with us forever. That dream went south when we turned away, when we just followed our cravings. But he broke back in with the cross into our lives and brought us a new identity in which we could live out God's good works forever. You might say to yourself, listen, I, I'm, I'm kind of in this place. Like, I don't often feel like doing the right thing. I don't feel like being a good parent. I don't feel like being a caring friend. I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like reading my Bible. I don't feel like going to work every day. Join the, join the club, right? But that's the whole point. Jesus broke into your and my story so that he could forever give us a new identity that is bigger than my dog on a run doing whatever he feels, but one in which we follow the, the righteous vision of God for the world knowing that there's going to be a day where he just puts his kindness and his love on display for us forever. So as we close today, I just want to invite you to dream. What does kindness look like in your life this week, whether you feel like it or not? Go to our Worship Anywhere page, download a discussion guide, talk about it with somebody. Talk about this message with somebody. Think through the questions. Join a virtual discussion group, a community group, and, and grab our, our um, How Can We Help Neighbor form. Start writing a note for your neighbors and invite them how to help. God bless you this week. Thanks for joining us. And remember, God raised you up. You have a seat with Jesus. He wants to express his kindness to you forever. Let that show through this week regardless of how you feel. And the great news is that feelings are going to follow. As you serve Jesus, whether you feel like it or not, you're going to start more and more feeling like doing it. Because instead of following our feelings, feelings follow us when we follow Jesus. Feelings will follow when we follow Jesus. God bless you guys. Have a great week. You are here. You're turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you.
for worshiping with us at Surprise Church. You can worship anywhere. We should try the 30 for 30. Worship for 30 minutes, discuss for 30 minutes. You can go to our Worship Anywhere page and find our discussion guides, our virtual groups. We will see you next week. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless and have a great day.